As the protests in Iran continue, a new player is now trying to enable the people of Iran to communicate to the outer world. What has been happening there since the last 15 days, how the internet has been completely shut off for the people and how now people are getting the word out of Iran is all described in this very short monologue. A request to all of you to please like this video and if you have not subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel. Here we go. Who was Parashurama who led a life of devotion, dedication and daring? Why did he take birth on the earth? Was it to eradicate corrupt Kshatriya rulers who had become tyrannical and oppressive or was it to bestow daya for the needy? Why Starlink jamming in Iran is a warning for India? Well, Starlink stepped in once the internet was shut off by the Ayatollah-led government. Then Starlink stepped in and then something interesting happened. That's what we're going to talk about. What are the ways out and how this affects India because Starlink is about to enter India also. They're going to have a lot of options and so on and so forth. So let's take a quick look at what happened. Iran is witnessing its largest anti-regime protests in years entering the 18th day as we record this and this probably might come within 24 to 48 hours so you get the idea triggered by economic collapse inflation and political repression under the supreme leader ayatollah ali khamenei over 500 killed thousands arrested the number is wrong i believe it's the number of people killed is in tens of thousands According to international human rights, uh, if you want more information, do watch social media channels where people are talking about those who escaped Iran and they have gone in, gotten into Turkey or other countries and they are giving us a real picture of what is going on. The protests are now reportedly in over 280 cities. I've heard the number 300 also being mentioned, including Tehran. Shiraz, Mashhad, Isfahan and Tabriz. The demonstrators are calling for the end of the Islamic Republic, chanting against Khamenei, the IRGC and demanding the return of Crown Prince Reza Pahlavi. By the way, Reza Pahlavi doesn't want to come and rule Iran from what he has said so far. He wants to be sort of like a nominal monarch like the Queen of England or King of England and let a democracy thrive in Iran with a parliamentary form of government or probably even a presidential form of government. That part has to be looked at from the way the constitution will get drafted. So there are lots of steps that need to happen before normalcy or democracy resumes in Iran. After all, this used to be a very vibrant democracy up until 1950s and then United States stepped in and uh, dismantled the Mossadegh government and then things have not been the same after that. Since January 8th, there has been an internet blackout in Iran. The objective was to prevent coordination among protesters and block global media coverage. The domestic internet service providers throttled mobile data, blocked VPNs and severed international gateways. As a result, Iran's nearly 80 million citizens were plunged into a digital blackout, unable to communicate either within or without the country. So Starlink stepped in. Elon Musk Starlink previously activated in Iran during the Masa Amini protests in 2022, re-emerged as a critical tool for communications. Operating via low earth orbit satellites, bypassing state-controlled internet infrastructure. An estimated 40,000 to 50,000 Iranian users had access via smuggled or repurposed terminals. Starlink allowed protesters to upload videos, coordinate actions and contact journalists abroad despite the blackout. Well, the initial reports now are saying after the Iranian government shut down Starlink, that there is about 30% disruption in Starlink's upload download data. How did this happen? Well, within 48 hours of the stoppage of Starlink, close to 80% of them got shut down. And, and this is according to Iran Wire and Mia Group data analysis. This has affected both urban households such as Tehran, Mashhad, as well as remote areas in the west and north. 
Users are reporting widespread failures, including total packet loss, frozen terminals, and GPS desynchronization. Now, how did the regime jam Starlink? Well, they had military grade RF and microwave jammers. These are supposed to have been from Russia. They jammed Starlink's KU and KA band signals. What does that mean? Well, what happens is whenever you are communicating with satellites, you are given a certain frequency band. You are only supposed to use that band because if you use outside of that band, you could be A, disrupting other communications of other entities with other satellites and also you could not be able to get your data across to your own satellite. After all, satellites sit outside much above the earth. Your signal goes from here and then it gets taken into the satellite and then from there it gets reflected to wherever you want it to go. So this is how anything based on satellite communication works. So what they did was they figured out that Starlink was using KU and KA band signals. These are all spectrum. There are some frequencies and they started jamming them and they were having units provided by Russia and also by China. The jamming operation itself costs a lot of money. It costs about close to $1.56 million per hour due to heavy power use and system wear. But the regime uses it as a strategic priority to prevent protest coordination. Well, it is believed that they got help from Russia as well as China. And we know that China has a huge investment in Iran. If Iran falls to uh, US-backed interests, then what's going to happen? Well, Iran's oil to China, which has been given to China at a discount, will completely get cut off. And China suddenly will find that one third of its oil sources, such as Venezuela and Iran, are off and they'll have to scramble to get from somewhere else that would shoot up the price of the oil and among other things. So China doesn't want that to happen. So they are going to try and do everything that is possible within their domain to try and keep up this tottering regime. So what is Starlink going to do? Well, we have to wait and see if they can actually change the band of transmission. See, the thing is, it's not just the band of transmission change. You need to do it at the receiver transmitter level at the base units. So I don't know if there's a switch setting on these Starlink receiver dishes that you could say instead of KU and KA band, go to some other band and start transmitting from there. But then the receiver also needs to know that there is a change in band. So I don't know how that's going to play out. Certainly there are disruptions now for Starlink also, but the word is still coming out. What is the Trump administration doing? Trump has condemned the Khamenei action of killing so many people and throwing so many people in jail. It is believed that the lives of those in jail is at risk. Why? Because it is believed that they are being jailed on suspicions of being a spy of either Mossad or CIA or worse. So these are all things could be trumped up charges. There could be some reality. Be that as it may, they may never see light again. That's what Trump is concerned about. And Trump said that, you know, we are not going to give up. And he also warned Khamenei that you kill those people and you are going to pay for it very, very heavily. Well, Iran is not sitting quiet either. They are seeing if they can, like, for example, shut off the Ormuz Strait. If that happens, oil shipping completely gets messed up and that would mean a huge problem for the whole world. Prices will spike again of crude. So that is one real danger. Well, Trump has said that Elon Musk will find a way out of this problem. In other words, to try and re-enable Starlink. We'll have to wait and see. I'll give you an update once I find out what has happened in the last few hours. Right now, it is still down and we have to find out how this is going to find its way out. We have to find out how the Starlink is going to get enabled back in Iran. Now, see, the marketing of Starlink was that it was an unstoppable internet for oppressed nations. Yet, people are able to stop it because all you need to do is find out what is the frequency of your transmission and if you can, you know, put a stronger signal on the same wavelength and very close to your bodies, then all bets are off. That, but it's very expensive because this will be in individual homes. How are you going to jam the signal very close to individual homes? If there's a cluster of homes having Starlink, maybe you can do it easier. But if it is one somewhere in one square kilometer, 
that becomes very, very expensive and you need to find out where it is coming from, right? So that means they don't know. So they'll have to just blanket it. If they blanket it, that's going to cost even more money. So these are all some of the problems for the Iranian government also. And uh, be that as it may, this is the first time a government has shut down Starlink. So Starlink is also chomping at the bit. They'll probably want to prove to the world that nobody can stop us. We are unstoppable. This is an interesting fight emerging here. So we'll have to wait and see how Elon Musk is going to respond to that. Certainly, he loves technical challenges such as this one. Now, there are some strategic lessons for India from this. India is considering allowing Starlink into its broadband market. And this Iran episode underscores the security risks of foreign controlled communication infrastructures, including potential jamming by China and Pakistan in border regions and data control by US firms during political tensions. But then look, we are using so much of US material anyway right now. How do you know? Some of the servers that are using, some of the hardware you are using, how do you know that that's not being spied on? What about iPhone? I mean, where do you stop, right? So these are all questions that will have to be answered one at a time and, and I'm not going to make much of a big deal about it. The national preparedness requires India to develop its own satellite internet, deploy a sovereign kill switch and enforce a space cyber security framework under Indian regulators. These are all big giant technology steps. I don't know if India is uh, going to be able to take those things because it's a big device, a big product, plus it's got a lot of moving parts. Where are you going to get all those parts? India doesn't manufacture them. So you can say that, oh, nice, nice, we'll be Atmanirbhar. But that requires a lot of basic things being available in India. And that's still a long way off. Well, Iran's regime executed the first successful nationwide Starlink shutdown using military-grade jammers. Russia and China's involvement signals growing authoritarian coordination in electronic warfare. U.S. digital strategy forces serious challenges. Starlink is not invincible. India and allies must prepare for electronic denial warfare. It's also called DOS, denial of service. This happens in internet, for example. What happens in internet is, supposing you want to make one site to go down, what you do is you attack that site with a lot of bots going to that site all at the same time. Then what happens is the site just gets completely messed up trying to respond to requests. That's called as DDoS, denial of service attacks. Then this happened. I mean, nowadays people have content delivery network that seems to be able to get around this problem. But these are all moving targets. One guy fixes the problem. The other guy tries to find a way to break that. You get this goes back and forth and back and forth. So this incident redefines connectivity as a battlefield domain and there is control of frequencies that is involved here and control of those frequencies equals control of freedom. We'll have to wait and see how this plays out. It's a very interesting problem for Elon Musk to solve. I'm sure they'll have multiple bands of operation enabled, but how does the base unit switch from a current default band to something else? And how does the receiver also respond in the same way? Because this is something that's going to require a little bit of technological work. I don't think anything can be done now. The only thing that Elon can control is the satellite and the software that goes into the satellite itself. So we'll have to wait and see uh, how much that can essentially reprogram the receivers on the ground. And that can be done. Well, more power to you. You can have solved the problem and they may be able to hop to other frequencies and make these jammers redundant and they will have to figure out how the frequency hopping is happening and then they'll have to respond to that. Like I said, you know, one guy does something, the other guy will do another thing, but the time is running out. Right now, if America and Israel mount a joint attack and America said that we have identified 50 spots, hot spots within Iran where IRGC and their ancillary units are located and this is where we are going to take them out. If IRGC is out, by the way, that means that Khamenei's teeth have been pulled out. We'll see how this goes. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.